my name is Jack Everett and I'm a student here at the college and uh, this is about pulling handles on the piece but it's also about how to approach uh, working with uh, handles. So the first thing I'm going to start with is pulling it uh, from this large piece of clay. Now what I'm doing really is stroking it more than pulling it. So in other words, if you start, if you squeeze it too hard, it'll kind of tear or pull. But if you keep it moist so your hands can stroke through it, uh, that's the best way to do it. The other thing to remember is to pull all the way through it. In other words, don't stop here at the end, but rather pull all the way through. And then if you hold it at eye level, then you can turn it as well. And when it gets a little narrower, <clears throat> then you can just focus on that. Now the other thing is, uh, I have several mugs here, but it's always good to be thinking about making handles for three or four mugs, for example. So if I'm doing three or four mugs, I'm going to pull maybe five or six handles off of this piece. That way if something goes wrong, I just cut the handle off the mug and I have another one ready to add on. So you can see it's getting down. And this is not going to be the normal length of the handle. It's going to be more like a stub. And when the stub is attached to the handle, uh, to the mug or the vase, you can see that that's when we actually make it the proper length. So I have these mugs before me, so I have an idea and I kind of pinch off what I think will be a good length and then I pull and remember it's just stroking. Now because my handles are flat, then I use my thumb and kind of flatten it out and the sides I make a circle and as I come down it rounds it out. Once again I'm pulling all the way through. Now the handles, uh, when I'm doing pictures, they're going to be larger, so I'll do those next. Once again, I'm stroking, not really pulling on the clay, but just stroking it down. Now these stubs here are different lengths but not too much because once I start to work with them then I'll realize how much I need and I can um, cut them down if that's what I want. Now I'll pull one more. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is to get the mug itself ready. Now people often ask how wet or moist does it need to be. Now this is called leather hard, but even that can be a little bit confusing. So what I try to do is I want the mug to be able to move just a little bit, to flex a little bit, but it has to be firm because I'm going to press into it and if it's too wet, uh, then it's, it, you're going to get an indentation on the inside. So once I look at the mug and I decide where I want the top of the handle to come in, 
So this one's probably going to be in this little sweet spot right here. And I score it. And then I'm also going to score at the bottom where I'm going to attach it. Um, and then I just add some moisture. And if it's really dry, then you may want to add slip, but I don't want it to be too weak either. So once I have done that, then I pick up one of these stubs and I compress the end. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to press it into the, into the mug. And when I do that, I'm going to have a finger on the inside so it doesn't distort the shape of the mug. So I press straight in and then I start to move out and press the mug in, press the clay in. So you can see how I'm kind of pressing that there. And it's a little harder to see on this side, but I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Well, I'll keep it straight here. So you can see now that once I got it on there, I'm making sure that it's really attached well because we're going to pull it down. Now the, the other thing to remember about this handle is we don't want to put a bend in it until the very end. So we want to make sure that it's straight and along the way we'll just keep attaching it. So the next thing I'm going to do is put this up. Now once I put it up, then I can get underneath it. Then I can get the other side. And smooth it out. Now the next thing, remember we're going to keep it straight, so we rotate it down. And so now it's still hanging straight. Now we keep it at eye length, and now is when we once again kind of stroke it till we get the length that we want. And while we're doing that, we're also making sure that it's well attached. Part of the challenge is not to pull too, too tight here. Some people pull here and then loosen up, and then this gets to be narrower up at the very top. But see how I'm continually working on attaching it. So, now I think that's the length that I'd like. So the next thing I do is just turn the mug to its side and then I just make the curve in the, in the handle and press it on the bottom. Then I usually slip my fingers in to see if it's the right thickness. If I want it a little bit higher, I can do that. And then I press on here. Now the other thing you can do is just kind of cut off the bottom. Now you're going to want to make sure to attach the bottom just like you did the top, really working the angles. Then the other thing I do is that's where I put the stamp for my uh, my initials because it also presses in the, into the clay. So by putting the stamp in there, that compresses it in. And then you kind of look at it, see if it's the look that you're going for. So then I pull up another one and, re and repeat the process. So I kind of look to see where I want the handle. Because remember, it's really about relating to the lip. Put this score on the bottom. Compress it. Uh, 
uh, and then press it in just straight ahead first and then to the right and then to the left and you can see and then you just continue to press it out. Now you can't really see as well but on the left side I'm using my left hand and that thumb to kind of press that down. Then the next thing I do is to lift it up and when I lift it up it, then it's pretty easy to get the top and the bottom. Okay, then once again, it, I keep this straight, don't put a bend in it till the end, and then I rotate it around, and now I'm pulling it to the length that I would like. Okay, now once again, just tilt it forward. This is the length I'd like. Now I just tilt it forward, and then to put the arch in the handle, I just lift it up, and then I attach it to the bottom, and I kind of turn it and look at it, see if my hands fit in, if that's the width that I want. Then I just press here, press it in, and then I just sweep across the bottom to make sure it's compressed. Because a lot of times this is where it cracks, right along the sides. Uh, any of the edges where it's a little thinner and dries a little quicker than the, than the clay body itself. And then once again I just take my stamp and press that in there. Okay. So we'll do one more. Once again, I'm just scratching it top and bottom. Compressing the ends, keeping my hand on the inside. And you can see how when it comes out, you're still pressing it in. Then I, I tilt it up so I can get underneath it and the top. Smooth it out and attach it. But remember, keep this straight. Then I rotate it around. Now this one I'm going to make a little longer because I'm going to put a twist in it. Uh, because I want to show you that this is, uh, this makes the handle at this point in making it a little sturdier. In other words, if you put too much water on it, it's going to be weak and overly responsive. So if I make a change in the handle, I'm only going to want to do it once or twice. Otherwise, it's going to weaken the place where it bends. So So on this one, once again, I turn it down, but I'm going to come up and around and attach it a little higher up 
and see if I can, yeah, do something like that. So I didn't really know where I was going to attach it, so afterwards I kind of have to score it. And still smoothing out the bottom. Now this could fit in a car in a mug in a car holder, so that's why I want to leave this a uh, little open. Once again, I'm trying to get this. So I get my fingers in it. And once again I'm going to put my initials using the stamp in the in the mug. I really like the upswing in this, so when I dry it, I might set it upside down so I can so I can keep that. So let's just move to the pictures. Basically, it's the same thing, only they're a little larger, a little more awkward to handle. Uh, but it's the same idea in terms of working in a series because basically what you're doing is you're developing muscle memory about how to stroke when you're creating a handle and how to pull it and how to hold a piece. All of that comes when you work in a series. When you work on a series, let's say five or six mugs, each time you learn something you apply it to the next piece that you apply the handle to so that your learning is uh, immediately applied and so you get better quicker. If you do just one piece, what you learn, you, you may be a week before you do another one or maybe a couple weeks. So it's better to work in a series so that your learning progresses. Um, then if you don't come back to it, you've because it's muscle memory, you're still uh, will start off better on those first ones. It's still the same idea, you're really kind of stroking it. Uh, now because it's a pitcher, it's going to be a little wider. But you don't want it too heavy because it'll just pull, the weight of it will um, affect the, the look of it. Now if you make this too long, what happens is when I attach it, it's going to start to sag. So you want to, you want it a little on the stubbier side. Uh, so that it's a little sturdier. Um, and then when you attach it, you can pull. And you can just squeeze off the end if it's not, uh, if you haven't pulled evenly through kind of stroked it evenly. So on this I'm going to want to line that handle up with the spout. So I might make a little mark at the top and then I still think I'm going to come in kind of at this angle here. 
kind of attaching it. And then down at the bottom, So I do the same thing in terms of compressing it. And you can tell when I looked at this one, I just think it's still going to be a little uh, narrow for this piece. So that's why you pull a couple ahead of time. Just compress the ends. Probably should widen this a little bit more. Same thing, now I'm going to put my hand on the inside so it doesn't indent it, make an indentation. Kind of line it up with the spout, press straight in, and then to one side, and then to the other side. And you can see how I'm kind of moving back and forth to get it attached. You can also tell that it's heavier and because it's heavier it puts a little more stress on the neck. So you want to make sure that it's attached. And then once again same thing keep it up. So you can get the bottom and smooth everything out. And then rotate it <coughs> and do the same thing we did on the mugs. Make sure it's attached. You don't want it to be too wet because it'll get soft and start to sag. And you don't want it to, you don't want to pull too hard because you also stretch out that neck. Now remember when you're pulling down, pull through this because otherwise this will end up a little thicker. But if it does, you can just pinch it off and pull it. Okay, it's the same idea as the mug. You just tilt it forward and you're kind of lined up because you got a spout and then you lift it up and, the, and then this is the angle that you're looking for. Can you see that? Put your hand in there. Now once again I scratch kind of lower but it's easy to clean that up and then just scratch where it's going to be attached. Make sure it's lined up with the spout and then just press it in. Because you want that to be really tightly compressed because once again this is where it cracks or could separate as along the edge. Then I take uh, the stamp and Press it in. And go back and smooth everything out. Okay. Now let's say I think that it's too high up. 
then I can easily just cut off the bottom and slide it down just a little bit. Now the thing to remember is you can only do this two or three times and then it's going to be too weak and overly responsive. So you can make adjustments but you don't want to play with it. But do the same thing. You gotta kind of attach it. Make sure the sides are attached. Okay, I like that a little better. So when it's like this, I'll give it a little turn so you can take a look at it. I'm seeing if it lines up with the spout. And I'm just kind of taking a look at it. Okay. So what I hope you take away is to make the handles in a series, so be thinking about five or six, and then make some extra um, of these stubs to attach. And then the way you test whether it's leather hard is whether this is movable or not. It has to be really firm, but if you can flex it, that's good. If you can't flex it, it might be too dry. And if it's too dry, then you can, you can wet it and make sure that you use slip then in addition to just scoring it.